Hey everybody, Last Outrider here, how you doing? Uh, bringing you part two of my Champions of Fenris supplement video series. Um, if you don't know who the Champions of Fenris are, go check out my fluff videos. This one is going to be talking about Relics of the Great Wolf. Basically, they give you a whole bunch of other just crazy special items only for Space Wolf uh, armies and uh, detachments that you're, we're going to go into here, especially the fluff part. So these are called Relics of the Great Wolf, are unique and incredibly powerful heirlooms of the Space Wolves and have served the Great Wolves of the chapter for many millennia. Only one of each of the following relics can be chosen per army. There is only one of each type of these items in the entire galaxy! Exclamation point. So, let's see. Uh, the first one is called Armor of Asvald Stormrack. And here's the fluff. When Logan Grimnar was a wolf guard in the great company of Asvald Stormrack, the wolf lord gifted him with a suit of ancient Terminator armor, a relic of the chapter. It was the armor that Asvald had worn as a wolf guard to his lord, and which his lord had worn before him, in a line stretching back many thousands of years. A remarkable piece from the dark age of technology. The armor hides a host of mechanisms beneath its ceramite plate, able to repair damage and heal rents caused by power blade or plasma bolt. Following the tradition, Grimnar grants the armor to worthy warriors that serve and protect him. So what does it do, you ask? The armor of Asvald Stormrack confers a 2 plus armor save and a 4 plus invulnerable save. The wearer also has the bulky Deep Strike. It will not die and relentless special rules, but cannot make sweeping advances. That's a nice piece of armor. Um, Frost Fury is the next one. Over millennia of campaigning and fighting for the Imperium, the vaults of the Fang have become filled with rare and potent weapons. The storm bolter known as Frostmer, or Frost Fury in High Gothic, is just such an example a weapon crafted long ago by the skilled hands of an unremembered tech adept. Rechambered to fire bolt rounds tipped with Hellfrost warheads. It is the only known example of such a weapon. The secrets of its creation lost. In battle, the glittering rounds impart their freezing payloads as they explode deep in the flesh of their victims. Few enemies can survive both the destructive force of a detonating bolt shell and the frigid blast of shattering glimmer frost crystal. What does it do? Here's what it does. It is range 24, strength 4, AP 5, assault 4, hellfrost. What is hellfrost? Well, hellfrost, when a model suffers one or more unsaved wounds from this weapon. It must pass a separate strength test for each wound suffered or be removed as a casualty. There you go. So basically it does two wounds. The first wound is going to be resolved normally against toughness and with strength four. And the second wound is going to require a strength roll on part of whatever's hit. Or be removed as a casualty. Now, <clears throat> this is interesting because it doesn't say take a strength roll and if you fail it, you take a wound. 
It doesn't say that. It says pass a separate strength test for each wound suffered or be removed as a casualty. So this is an instant kill by any interpretation. For every wound this this weapon inflicts, unsaved wound this inflicts on a on a on a on a on a thing. Uh, it has to pass a strength test or or be insta killed. Um, I don't know if they meant to do that or if that's just me reading it, but that seems pretty fucking deadly. Which is even more interesting because since this isn't insta kill. Uh, that means it'll 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 work on eternal warriors and all the other types of things like that even even you know whatever the toughness 10 it doesn't matter I guess but of course it has to fail first but even if it did it's removed as a casualty if it fails a strength roll Whew. okay next sorry uh, Kraken bone sword years. When the Kraken's spur raises from the seas of Fenris are times of plenty for the world's tribes. In the dripping grottos and shallow pools can be found the remains of ancient Kraken. From those bones, priceless blades can be crafted. In his youth, Logan Grimnar had one such blade made for him by a smith of the Iron Blood tribe. After recovering a suitable shard of bone from the Kraken spur, though its edges were as sharp as the day it was first made, Arjak Rockfist reworked the blade into a deadly frost sword before presenting it to his liege lord once more. It has since become a powerful heirloom of the champions of Fenris. For no armor can resist its bite. It's a melee weapon. Uh, it's plus one strength. AP2. And master crafted. Pretty sweet with that one. And pretty straightforward, so you won't have any, any difficulty interpreting that. Next. Morkai's Claws. Named for the legendary two-headed wolf Morkai... It is said that a master artificer of Mars, whose name has long since been forgotten, that seems to be a common fate for many of these people who made these, <clears throat> was inspired by the story of the wolf god's defeat at the hands of Lehman Russ. He presented the mighty Primarch with a pair of wolf claws that he had forged specially to honor the victory. Imbued with all the beastal fury for which the wolf god was renowned, to wield Morkai's claws in battles is to unleash the wrath of the caged beast and tear every foe to a bloody ruin. Nice. Morkai's claws are a pair of unique wolf claws that replace all of the model's ranged and melee weapons. So if you're getting any special... Uh, weapons or, or if you've got a character that has something getting some power from some weapons they, they say this automatically um, removes it if you give it to them a range zip strength plus one AP three it has the special rules of melee, maul rending, shred and specialist weapon Maul, what is that you ask? Oh, well, in close combat, the bearer of Morkai's claws gains plus D3 attacks instead of plus one for fighting with two weapons. Roll at the start of each fight subphase to determine which attacks you get. So it's not just da 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 you roll at the start of the game and see if you get D3 plus attacks. You roll at the start of the fight subphase. So not not when you get to the model in hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Okay, not when you go to hit, not to anything like that. So if you want to call the space uh, the space wolf player on this. He has to roll the D3 for these claws at the start of the subphase. 
not at them when the model is activated to take an action. It's too late then. Boom. At that point in time, he doesn't even get the plus one for fighting with two weapons if he didn't roll it. It just means he gets no benefit from Maul. So no plus one for two weapons and no plus D3. So that is going to keep Space Wolf players on their toes. <coughs> wow. Um, okay then. Pelt of the Bale Wolf. The Pelt of Wolves are plentiful trophies amongst the champions of Fenris, as each is an able and fearless hunter. However, some of these mantles are rare indeed, and steeped in legend, belonging to one of the ferocious, near-mythical, black-maned thunderwolves that, so the stories claim, escape from Morkai's realm once every generation to terrorize the slopes of Asahim. Okay? The pelt of Beowulf is one such relic. Still soaked in the scent of the long-dead creature. Ooh, that doesn't sound pleasant. Beasts instinctively cower before the wearer, sensing the presence of an alpha predator upon the wind. The wearer of the pelt of Beowulf has the fear special rule. Furthermore, enemy units with the beasts cavalry or monstrous creature unit types wow uh that are in base contact with the wearer or his unit automatically fail any fear test they are required to make unless they have the and they shall know no fear or fearless special rule. That's kind of scary. That's a mouthful, but it's kind of scary. So it's saying that any monstrous creature, any beast creature, any cavalry, or any monstrous creature, unit type, automatically fails their fear rule in base-to-base -base contact with this character or any model of this character's unit. Wow. Unless, of course, they're fearless or have shall know no fear. That's scary. That, 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 that's really scary. <laughs> Probably for Tyranids, too. Um, Felclaw's Teeth. Logan Grimnar's saga tells of his defeat of the legendary Thunderwolf Felclaw many years ago. Though he keeps the giant beast's skull as a trophy to this day, the Great Wolf has a necklace of teeth made from the fangs of its lower jaw. This he grants to a deserving member of the champions of Fenris as a token of his favor. To be held in such high honor by the old wolf himself is a sign of immeasurable esteem. And the warrior who bears Felclaw's teeth will fight all the harder to be worthy of the gift bestowed upon him. So what does it do for you? The bearer of Felclaw's teeth re-rolls all failed to hit rolls in close combat only. Bam. There you go, people. I know there's going to be a whole lot of people very anxious out there after reading these new artifacts to get them and use them. Um, until next time, bye.